Tunisia are one of the more unfancy teams at the World Cup and for good reason. They made it through qualifying with more than their fair share of luck. And at the Africa Cup of Nations, Tunisia made it to the quarterfinals, but do not be fooled into thinking that was much of an achievement either. They lost more games than they won. This is a team who have very low expectations coming into the tournament. Manager Jalel Kadri took charge at the start of this year on the back of their Cup of Nations misery, and his career is difficult to assess. He's had about 22 jobs in club football, but that is pretty reflective of the difficulties of coaching in the Arabic game. He previously was on the backroom team with Tunisia though, and that helped him understand the personalities in this dressing room and helps him make tactical changes that have been needed. He is Tunisian and passionate about making a mark on this team and this tournament. He feels pressure to perform well and give back to the nation. That's helpful, but this is a cautious team who aim to keep clean sheets and then play counter-attacking football. They'll set up in a 4-3-3 formation, but with little intent to play on the front foot. A lot of the time it's fair to say they will look like a 4-5-1 and while it is a defensive approach, it's not necessarily a negative thing because Tunisia know they have limitations and that playing an open game would not help them in any way. One to watch is Elise Shkiri who plies his trade with Cologne and is a bustling midfielder who will make himself known from the very first whistle. His energy will set the tone for this team as he leads by example. He's always one of the most hard-working players on the pitch and with 48 international appearances behind him, he has the experience for a stage like this. Wabi Kazri is the guy this team rely on for goals. His pace and ingenuity at their best, possibly only chance of catching any teams out in this group to help produce that magic moment this team needs. He plays for Montpellier and has something special about the way he plays. He scored twice at the last World Cup and is second on the nation's list of all-time top scorers with 24 from 71 games. Tunisia were African playoff winners following a two-legged affair with Mali. They won the away leg courtesy of an own goal and then drew nil-nil in the return leg at home. It was pretty dour stuff with very little imagination or craft involved. But the main thing was they got over the line and it felt like a big relief. The first aim has to be to win a game here. Doing so will genuinely feel like a big moment for this team. Their most likely chance of doing that is against Australia but even if it happens there, it's likely to be by a very tight margin. The ultimate ambition would be to give a good impression of themselves and make it out of the group. But with Denmark and France in that group, it seems unlikely. If you've not worked it out by now, Tunisia are going to need to defend and run and battle in Qatar. After that, they will attempt to score and hopefully produce an upset somewhere along the way. Their odds to win the tournament are a big price, 750 to one, and that reflects the ability in this squad. This is an underdog story at best, but that's still unlikely. If they show collective strength and do manage to nick the odd goal though, you never know.